So good to be here. It felt so nice and crisp this morning. It was great. If you will turn to Daniel chapter 3, we're going to try to finish up this uh, chapter today. And as you're turning there, let me remind you that when Daniel was writing this, you know, he's Jewish, so his native language was Hebrew, but he chose to write pretty much the first seven chapters in Aramaic, which everybody in Babylon could read. Now, it makes sense, especially as we go through this story, why he wanted them to understand it. He wanted them to see the power of God at work in his life. <clears throat> so if you'll join me, we're going to read through the end of the chapter, quite a lengthy passage here. Then we'll come back and look at how God can possibly use this in our lives in 2024 in uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Mm. All right, starting with verse 12. I'm going to back up a couple of verses. I want you to see this. <clears throat> All right, but there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. This is the Chaldean speaking to Nebuchadnezzar, and he said, you're the one that did this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you've set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, had a big orchestra there, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image I've made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we're thrown into a blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you had set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. Get that now change of attitude. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing the robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these men firmly tied fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw in the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors all crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation and language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut to pieces and their houses turned into piles of rubble for no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. All right, let me... Just pray and ask God to open our hearts. Father, you're here with us. And so we pray that your Holy Spirit would show us things that we can use. The examples that these men have set are, uh, are for our good. 
And so uh, thank you, Father, for what you did before and uh, how you have brought us through so many things like you did these children of Israel. Be with us again. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go back and unpack this a little bit. <clears throat> Remember back in verse 12, who was it that turned them in? Was it spies? It was the people they worked with. You ever have co-workers that you feel are kind of out to get you? I think most people do anything to save themselves and to make themselves look good. You know, uh, <clears throat> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were already promoted because when Daniel interpreted the dream, he asked the king to help his friends out. He made them governors over several provinces of Babylon. And like I told you last week, they probably displaced somebody. So that wasn't a good thing in some ways because it made people mad when they lost their job because Daniel interpreted a dream. However, it probably saved their lives. So it may have been a little balanced, but I'm thinking the way people work in the back of their mind, they're saying, how can we get these guys later on? <clears throat> I had a friend many years ago who had... Uh, Boys, same age as my boys. We have three boys. And we uh, camped together. We spent a lot of time together. We traveled together, stayed same places. And although he's a little bit different than I was, well, I liked the guy. We were friends. Well, as our boys grew up, uh, two of the kids went on a trip and... His son got in a little bit of trouble. And you know what? He blamed me. As a matter of fact, after spending all this time with him, he threatened to sue me over something that happened. Taught me a valuable lesson. Never put your faith in people. Our faith should only be in Jehovah because people who you may feel are your best friends can let you down in a way that crushes you. And that's exactly what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You think they were good workers? I think they were. I mean, they knew Jehovah God and their obligation to their heavenly father was to do the best job they could do. And the king, the king knew it. They were 10 times smarter than anybody else. So I don't think there was anything in their work that uh, could, could get them in trouble. But <clears throat> the Chaldeans, the, the national people of this particular country, looked and saw some things that <clears throat> gave them an opportunity. They refused to do what the king commanded everybody in the capital to do. People coming in, big celebration. Just bow down to the image. What's the big deal? You know, you don't have to mean it in your heart. But they said, there's no way. They made up their mind in advance. It doesn't matter what people around us say or do. We serve Jehovah. And I think the most interesting thing is the first part of that accusation they singled out the Jews first of all and uh, said they pay no attention to what you say now Miss Cavan's been a teacher for a long time and if students don't pay attention to what she's saying they can't learn but there's also a respect thing so I know I've been in her classroom time. She may say, you better listen to me. And what the Chaldeans were saying, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, don't listen to you. They do what they want to. Now, you and I know that was a lie, but what did the king think? <clears throat> Remember, this king's on a, Nebuchadnezzar's on an ego trip. Smart guy, builder, warrior, whatever. <clears throat> So that comment probably infuriated him. And if you look at that 
first verse, 13 or 14, it says he was furious. It says he was furious twice. Who do they think they are? And I, I can't help but think that Jews, who are they? Foreigners, who are they? You know what? They don't do what I say. What's he going to do? I'm going to kill you. Reminds me of something that happened 600 years after this fact. People hated the Lord Jesus. And they said, he doesn't pay any attention to Caesar. He thinks he's the king of kings. You know what? Kill him. People hadn't changed, have they? <clears throat> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's confidence was in Jehovah. <clears throat> and I saw something in some social media thing this year about how we live in society today. If you live really scared about what's coming and you just, you know, are thinking, oh no, then you're living in fear. Or I'm living in fear. Your main question is, what if? What if this happens? What if that happens? Oh no. What if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had lived like that? What if the king throws us in the fire? Remember, I think that Nebuchadnezzar, when he built that 90-foot image, bigger than the Dollar General over here, about eight times bigger than that, he also built this furnace that had a big door or opening on it, probably bricks, and I have a feeling it had a walkway going up 15, 20 feet in the air where they could throw the wood in it and then throw whoever he wanted to. So if they're living that way, what if? Man, what's the point? You might as well not even leave your house because always something can happen. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. The opposite of that is living in faith like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. You know what their question is? It wasn't a question, it's a statement. Even if, the king puts us in the fire. We're going to serve Jehovah. It doesn't matter. I know where I'm going. <clears throat> they weren't going to bow down and worship a man. God was the only one who was worthy of their worship. And that intestinal fortitude set an example for us 2,600 years later. They believed God was the only one who could save them. So here's, here's what I see the draw for us today is how do we live? Is it, oh no, what if this happens? What if this person's elected or that person's elected or what if the world falls apart? Job wrote and he said, even if he kills me, yet will I praise him. You see? Even if. So Nebuchadnezzar looked at him and he said, nobody can rescue you from me. I'm the baddest of the bad and I'm going to take your life if you don't do what I say. <clears throat> he thought he's pretty powerful, didn't he? He thought nobody was more powerful than, than, than him. So... <clears throat> I think that uh, a lot of people have a short attendance span and they, they think, oh, this will all blow over and it won't matter if I kill my governors of the state. However, it wasn't like that. All right, so they said that, notice how they answered him. Nebuchadnezzar, we don't have to listen to what you say. We don't have to make a defense. So they're pretty much verifying what they said, but they did it in the confidence God had given them. They said, look, God is able to rescue. He probably will do this, but even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't, we're not bowing down to you. 
He can take our lives and we will be okay with that. All right, so uh, Nebuchadnezzar gets even madder. He says, heat the furnace up and he tells SEAL Team 6, bind them up, take them up to the top and he destroyed his best soldiers. I wonder if we ever thought about that. And I, I'm thinking they're up on this walkway, like looking down, and they push them in and the fire burned up the soldiers. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fall down into the fire. As I was reading this and thinking about it, I wonder what went through their mind. Can you imagine? Raging blast furnace coming up at them. I think God gives people a saving grace at the time of death. I mean, the stories I've read in Fox's books of martyrs of how people had a smile on their face when they were eaten by lions and beheaded. God takes care of his own. And as he dropped them in, the only thing that got burned were the ropes. And they fell down into the fire. And you know what happened. <clears throat> As Nebuchadnezzar looks in, he's blown away. So there's a big door to the furnace that he can see. These guys are walking around. And he said, it looks like a son of the gods. I believe that it was the Lord Jesus, pre-incarnate, that came to be with them and give them comfort. Now get this. The worst thing that could possibly happen to them, getting thrown into thousand degree furnace turned out to be something totally unexpected. That's where they walked around with the Lord Jesus. Can you imagine? Would you be cast into a fire to sit and talk to the Lord Jesus? Here's how, here's how unique it was. When they're, when they're still alive walking in the fire, could they have left at any time? They could have walked out and everybody would say, whoa, how did that happen? They're talking with the king, the real king. They don't want to leave. But Nebuchadnezzar comes out and uh, what does he say? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego get the next point. He knew. Servants of the Most High God. Come out. Come here. They didn't leave till Nebuchadnezzar said, come here. I won't talk to you. So that's what he did. They come out and then, and isn't that unique that that's what he says? Servants of the Most High God. Everybody knew when he's questioning before, he's acting like, all you got to do is bow down. Janie and I watched Chariots of Fire. I don't know if you've seen that movie. It's kind of old. One of the best movies. And it was not made as a Christian movie, but true story of Eric Little, who's a missionary in China, running in the 1924 Olympics, 100 years ago. And his sister did not want him to run. She wanted him to, she, she wanted him to be a missionary. And he said, oh, Jenny, Jenny. God made me, but he made me fast. And he made me, when I run, I feel his pleasure. You know, <clears throat> that lifestyle led him to the point where he, when he was supposed to run in a heat on Sunday to qualify for the finals, he said, I'm not, I'm not running on Sunday. And the people on the Olympic Committee for... England, you know, begged and pleaded. But when it was all over, he said, I'm not doing it. My mind is made up. I'm going to do what I feel in my heart I need to do. And uh, one of the guys in the movie said, we almost had him convinced. And the other guy said, I'm glad we didn't. Why do we need to make someone violate their principles? Well, that's what Nebuchadnezzar did with those guys. And they were willing. And are we willing no matter what, God's in control and he can take charge of our life. 
<clears throat> you know, who, who wants to get burned up? Who wants to go through a fire? When they came out, I'm thinking they thought, what an experience to talk to the living God in the middle of something that was meant to destroy us. I've always, uh, I've always believed you learn more through suffering and hard times than you do when everything's easy. You know, tribulation produces patience and character and all those kind of things, but we as human beings don't want to go through that. <clears throat> Janie and I have been fortunate to travel all over the world, and we've stayed in some dumpy hotels and hostels, and we've stayed in some five-star hotels, taking a lot of kids with us. When you stay in a really bad hotel, you learn something about the people you're with. You got the folks that complain all the time. You got the folks that say, it doesn't matter. Just sleep in here. I'll be fine. But 20 years later, guess which one you remember the most? You remember the, the bad stuff. Same thing's true in so many things. The hard times that you go through. Maybe it's when you're younger, just married, you go through tough financial times. And you see how God meets your needs and you come back and you say, whoa, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Those little things mold you and make you. And I think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had gone through several things. They went through that same diet restriction thing that Daniel did in chapter 1 where they wouldn't eat the king's meat and stuff like that. But <clears throat> it, it, it changed them, hardened them. When they got to the really hard, hard things in their life, they were ready. Life is a series of these kind of things that I think God molds us and makes us into who he wants us to be. I, I've got little Lucas, my eight-year-old grandson. He's funny. He's a, I think he's a pretty good athlete, but like my granddaddy told me, every old crow thinks his is the blackest, you know. So, uh, Lucas is pretty good, but one of his problems is he wants to tell everybody how good he is. And he tells the people that he's playing that week, we're going to beat you 50 to nothing. <laughs> you know, God gives them ammunition. Well, this week he's playing a team. Be careful what I said. They had a girl on the team. So Lucas is telling him, we'll beat you by 30 points. And guess what? Lucas' team got beat. So I'm watching, and I'm sad a little bit. Everybody wants to win. But as I'm watching, I'm thinking, that's the best thing in the world for my grandson. You know what? I hope, I don't know if it will, but I hope it'll help him watch his mouth and his attitude and help him to see that, you know what? You're not guaranteed to win. You're not guaranteed to win when you go to work. You're not guaranteed to win when you get home. Life is full of ups and downs. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come out of this thing different people. And you know what? <laughs> they had to go to work the next day. They got a little promotion. But can you imagine? Going through that, everybody's looking at you. Do you know what they went through? But they show up for work knowing that they had done what God had called them to do. Traumatic experience, and they're sitting at their desk the next morning running the government. So how are we doing today? We living by fear? No, no, what if? Or by faith? Even if, even though he slayed me. Nebuchadnezzar knew. He called them the servants of the Most High God. Do people know that those of us here in Peterson Community Church this morning are servants of the Most High God? 
That's what I want. That's what I want for me. That's what I want, want for us. Nebuchadnezzar had a moment where he realizes that was pretty awesome. Those guys should have been killed and they came out alive. Anybody that says anything about against their God, I'm going to cut you up. Fortunately today, they don't cut people up. I told you we've got 5,000 jails in prison. That's the threat they, they put on people. So we're facing similar things in 2024. A lady in England two weeks ago was standing outside an abortion clinic on the sidewalk with her eyes closed praying silently. Was not moving her mouth, was not opening her mouth, and she was arrested for praying silently. What? She went to jail willingly and they did let her go that afternoon said there wasn't enough evidence but that's the kind of world we live in it's not going to get any easier so I'm telling you that just like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego we have to make up our minds beforehand that we're serving Jehovah no matter what even if whatever the tides come because he will bring you through the fire and even if he doesn't we're still serving him. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for, uh, for your word, for the example of these guys. Oh, Lord, it's, it's really uh, difficult days in which we live in the world today. There are Christians who are being killed around the world and Christians who are being put in jail. And yet, Father, you're there with us. And we realize this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Help us to be faithful in all of these times. For it's in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right.